Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the new tagging updates in 2020.3. My previous video, I actually covered how to tag stale content, but this video, I'm gonna be focusing purely on how to tag assets in your Tableau server or Tableau online. Now, you do need the data management add-on in order to do this. So if you're watching this video and you can't see the external assets uh, section here on the left-hand side, or you go in there and it's not working correctly, you do need to make sure that you actually have that enabled on your server. It is unfortunately at an additional cost, but it has a couple of useful features that might be worth the price if you're looking to go down that road. Now, if I go into the external assets area, you'll notice that the group that you arrive at is the database and files. And when we're here, this is essentially showing you a range of assets on your Tableau server. If I click on this drop down, you'll also see that we have tables available to us. So these are essentially the tables that sit inside of those databases or files, as it were. So here you tend to see sheets from Excel. But if I go back to the top one, you will tend to see Excel files as um, the assets in this particular level. Now, if I go back to the explore page and I simply go to look at the workbooks, what you've been able to do for quite some time now is actually tag content. So if I just, for example, click on this, I can always go down here to tag and then I can add a tag um, to suit my needs. So I can just say a new tag here. Let me just tag this. So I hit the enter button there too quickly. <laughs> let's try that again. Uh, let's hit new. A hyphen tag. It doesn't like the space button. So any space basically enters um, uh, the character and you basically get a new tag. So I'm going to save that as a new tag. And there we go. We're pretty much done. But the new feature in 2020.3 is we're actually able to tag not just things like workbooks and data sources and, and sheets, but we can actually go in and individually tag assets such as databases, tables, and even columns inside of those uh, tables as well. So I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to go over to the external assets area. And essentially, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tag this database here. This is a Salesforce. This is a Salesforce authentication. So it's essentially just pulling in information from Salesforce. And if I go down here and I just click on the tag here, you'll see that I've actually already tagged this as Salesforce. Okay. So I'm going to also uh, call this, uh, I'm just going to put live, for example, I'm just going to call it that, that it's a live connection because essentially these are credentials that I've saved on Tableau online and I've got them also in the workbook. So when we actually query the information, it's almost reading it directly from Salesforce. Um, so I'll leave it as live and just to give it some sort of different notation there. And then the next thing I want to do is to actually go into a table and tag the table. Then I'm also going to tag a specific column in the table. So I'm going to go to Superstore here. This is essentially acts as a database. And you can see here that we've got um, a table here called orders. And this is actually one of the sheets you find in that Excel file. If you're slightly lost in this view, you've always got this lineage area here on the right hand side that you can actually use to give you some guidance. So if I want to go down to the workbook, I can just do that here and just keep going further down the hierarchy until I get to the owners of the workbook, which in this case is, of course, just me. But let's go back to the Superstore sales here. And what I want to do is I want to click on this table because this is what I actually want to go to. And when I'm here, I can do two things. I can tag this table and I'll call this sales hyphen table and just hit enter and I'm going to save the tags. And the next thing I can do is I can also tag these columns. Now you'll notice there's a column here on the right hand side that says no tags available. That just means I haven't tagged this content. But let's say we've got a calculation that's really uh, specific and maybe we want to be able to tag it so we know where certain information is being used. All you need to do is to click on the column name. This opens up this nice pop-up window and here you can edit the tags as well. So for example, you could tag this as a field that uses personally identifiable information. So you can say PII. And when you save that tag, it's obviously going to go and be assigned to that field. Now, let me just do that again. I think I, I didn't hit the uh, right thing there. So let's just um, so type in PII, then hit enter. There we go. That's saved. And then hit save again. And now that's actually happened correctly. You can add multiple tags. You don't just have to add one. I can also add another one here that says sales. 
and notice that my tags are universal, so they're not exclusive to a type of content. I can tag this as Salesforce, although it wouldn't make sense in this case because uh, this data source is actually an Excel uh, data source. So I hit save here as well. So now we've added two tags. And overall, we've added three. We've added one to a column, one to this table, and also one to a database. So you might be wondering, well, what use is this? How can I go find this content? Well, the first place you can go is the Explore page, where on the right-hand side, you can filter your content based on tags. Now, at this point, I'm on a top-level project, so of course, I don't get the ability to look at tags because tags don't exist at a project level. But if I go to Workbooks, you'll see that the filter pane on the right-hand side changes, and now I can actually start to interact with my tags. But notice that these tags are only specific to the workbooks. If I go to the data sources and I go back down to this drop down, you'll see that I just have one tag for stale content. Essentially, what's happened here is in the previous video I recorded, you can check it out. I actually tagged this as stale content. So uh, this, tag, this tag is still here. So you're probably wondering, well, where are my other tags? Well, in order to do that, we need to go back to the external assets. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna very quickly show you a cool feature which you can use with the metadata API, which allows you to very quickly query these tags. Before I do that, it's also worth mentioning that you do have the ability to look at tags here on the right-hand side. So if I click live, for example, you'll see that that comes up there. Salesforce comes up there. If I go down to tables, and I look at this as well, you'll see that I have just the one tag here for sales tables. But if I clear the filters and I go back in here again, you'll see that I still can't see every single tag that I created. Well, the best and easiest way to do that is to jump over here to this interface. And this interface essentially allows you to talk to the metadata API. Now, this is not designed to be a production level interface that allows you to export data like a CSV or Excel file. Um, but it is designed for you to look at what the API can actually offer you. Um, you'd need to do a bit of heavy lifting yourself to actually use the API, yeah, maybe connected to a third party system that manages assets across your organization so you can track where things are going. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see I actually already pre-entered a, a query here just to filter this list. It's very, very simple. You essentially start by naming the asset you want to look at. So in this case, it's tags. And then you bring all the sort of uh, information about those tags, so the ID, the name. And here I want to actually call out the assets. Then I go and get the asset ID because what I can then do with that is link it to other information and then the type of asset that it is. And you'll see that this has loaded a nice list here on the right hand side. So essentially you can see here that I added a new tag and this has actually been applied to a workbook and a sheet. Essentially the sheet is actually inside of that workbook, which is why those two sort of come hand, hand in hand. Now I also earlier marked stale content and you can see that this has applied it to the workbook and the sheet. So these two are sort of linked. Whenever you apply a tag to a workbook, it's automatic sort of it's automatically pushed down to the sheet and also any published data sources that might sit inside of that. Um, but the other thing to bear in mind is that you can also tag data sources separately. So you need to do a little bit of validation to make sure that the data source isn't part of a workbook or it is part of a workbook or maybe it's uh, published separately. Now, earlier on, you saw me tag the PII information. And the really cool thing is it's actually pull that information out. So this is a great way of tagging a series of content on your server and then being able to very, very quickly find it. If I just scroll down this list, you can see a few other tags that have been created. Um, for example, uh, the sales table uh, tagged to a database table. And this is all information that's easily available. If I just remove the ID just to make this list a little bit shorter, we actually just get a list of the type of assets. So you can see here that this sales item has been tagged to two columns here. And of course, uh, I've removed the ID, but you can of course go and find that out. Now, the way I know what to type here is essentially I'm just using this um, uh, capability here on the right hand side that shows me what to type. So if I just type in asset and then I go to tag assets, then it tells me um, what those things are. So if I go into taggable, then basically this is what it's returning. Uh, this list here, for example, is just a list of the implementations here on the right hand side. So that's pretty much all that's going on. It's a very, very simple list and it's a nice feature. And so if you're really into managing content and you need to be aware of um, information that's being used inside of Tableau and actually you want to bring that out of Tableau into a metadata system, the API is a really powerful way of actually going into Tableau, getting that information out 
and storing that information, maybe in an external database in your organization. So you can not only track what Tableau is aware of, but you can also track where information is being used in your entire organization to give you a much higher level overview of what's going on. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Um, it ended up really deep inside of this, uh, you know, admittedly code heavy sort of interface, but I just wanted to show you how you can use the metadata API to query information. And uh, don't forget, of course, this is just a temporary interface to use this and see what you can get. And ideally you'd want to build something a little bit more robust um, to find out how to use that. If you want to learn more about the Metadata API, I highly encourage you to uh, follow my colleague, Andre. If I just go back to YouTube here, you get to see all my great uh, tastes. Andre De Vries, here we go. And we go to his channel and you'll see that he's actually got a video here about the Metadata API. So this is a really good video just to give you a deep dive into how you should be using it. And he goes into a little bit of depth about Metadata API and also GraphQL and how you can use that to uh, to, to, to make everything work for you. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. If you've enjoyed the content, you know what to do. If you haven't, you also know what to do. There's a dislike button if you really want to smash it. Hopefully not. Hopefully you hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next video.